How are you guys doing this morning? Feeling a little cold? Would you like to stand up as we get started? We're excited to see you. Why don't you just open up in prayer? Father, we thank you for allowing us to see another day. I pray that your spirit would be with us this morning. I pray that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen. Here we go. Let's put our hands together. believe that we serve a God who does impossible things? 
Let's just sing that one more time. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. It's unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall so God would choose to open up our hearts this morning I pray that your spirit would speak to us I pray that you would move in this place cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands is filled, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. Sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Let me sing it out. And oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name. Son of heaven rose again on oh, trample day. Where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, we sing it out. The blazing sun shall pierce the night And I will rise among the saints My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face Oh, we worship you this morning
All right, guys, I cannot sing that song without crying, so pardon me while I'm like sniffling up here. Good morning, Sanctuary Church. My name is Jillian Chester, and I'm so excited to be here in the cold with you. Those of you in your cars, enjoy. Those of you at home, enjoy. We're just bundling up here. I got a little bit of news for you guys. If you guys are new here, if this is your first time here, or maybe you've been here a couple weeks, we would love to meet you. If you wouldn't mind going to the welcome tent after service, we do have a little gift for you, and we just want to meet you and say hi. Um, oh, my phone turned. Sorry about that. This summer, we are doing Summer Blast for the kids. We're so excited about it. It's going to be amazing. Yes, give it up. It's going to be June 15 through 17, 6 p.m. to 8.30 at night. It's going to be open to kids three years old who are potty trained through fifth grade. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be happening here at Camp Sanctuary. So if you have kids in your life, if you have friends who have kids in their lives, if you know a kid, get them here. It's going to be amazing. We've also got coming up at the end of the month on Memorial Day weekend, we will be doing the Loft House build down in Mexico. We won't be doing the pre-build this year. It's already all built. So if you're interested in going down to Mexico, make sure you stop by the booth after service and uh, get some information about that. Um, one announcement for our youth. Typically on Wednesday nights, they meet here. Moving forward, they are going to be meeting at the ministry center. So do not bring your children, your youth here. No one will be here. Go to the ministry center. The address is online if you need that. Make sure your youth are hanging out there. It's going to be a great time. One more thing uh, before we jump into offering is um, we want to start doing prayer after service. We were doing this before. It got a little crazy being outside in the tent. But if you need prayer for anything in your life, um, especially if something comes up in the message that you feel, you know, a tug on your heart, if you need prayer, we're going to have some of our pastors over outside on the green underneath the tents after service. So if you need prayer, please uh, stop by. They would love to pray for you. And lastly, um, we do uh, love that you guys are such a generous church. And so we just want to remind you that you can give. You can give online. You can give in person in the buckets. Uh, you can text to give. Um, but we really appreciate that. It helps us do things like the Loft House build, like Camp Sanctuary, like the Summer Blast. So we love that you are giving. The Lord loves that you are giving. And we are just uh, excited for what's happening at Sanctuary. So uh, let's continue in worship. we could ever breathe Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
in these last days that we will build our lives upon you. I pray that you would empower us and I pray that you would speak to us. I thank you for your Holy Spirit and I pray that you would inspire us this morning with the word. In Jesus' name I pray and everybody said Amen. 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 Hey, can we give it up for the worship team? Come on. Thank you, guys. Come on in the parking lot. Drive in church online. That was great. Welcome, everybody. That was the best. Uh, so I am so delighted to be here. Everybody doing okay on a cold morning? Great to see you. It's awesome. Hey, I'm so excited about this morning. I want to share with you a message that uh, God's been stirring on my heart. But first of all, we're going to uh, say a couple little things here. One is that Camp Sanctuary was mentioned. And if anybody wants to be a part of that, anybody wants to volunteer, especially some guys there, loved out some guys volunteering out there. A few years ago, I was in South Barrington, Illinois, and uh, I was visiting their church, big church there, and heard a story. I actually happened to sit behind one of the guys that worked in the nursery. It was all pro middle linebacker of the Chicago Bears, Mike Singletary, I was right there, right next to me. I recognized who he was. And then I heard the story about the church there that Mike Singletary worked in the nursery, all pro middle linebacker. People would drop their kids off and go, there's Mike Singletary. So anyway, maybe there's some guys that want to volunteer out there. We could use that. That would be great. Some guys want to rise up and do that. I worked in a nursery when we first had kids, and uh, so you don't have to work in the nursery, but maybe do something, Camp Sanctuary. You can see uh, our volunteer tent afterwards. I uh, also want to mention, ladies, we got Mother's Day coming up next week. It is going to be great. Hope you can be here. We have something super special, uh, as special as anything we've ever done at Sanctuary, so I hope you can be a part of that. And lastly, we're going to be observing, taking communion when we're all done, so especially everybody online, if you could be prepared for that, and you can get your cups here. So today we're going to be looking at the scripture. We're going to open the scripture in just a moment. And uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the most God-breathed, inerrant, always true, never changing, God-breathed book. And so we're going to be opening that in just a minute. Uh, I want to have a moment to pray to prepare our hearts to receive the words. If you'd bow your heads with me and pray. Father, thank you that you are the God that speaks to us through your word. Father, I pray that uh, our hearts would be ready Father, to hear your word, uh, a word that's different than any other word, uh, more important than any other word spoken to our lives and over our lives. Uh, your word brings light and truth and freedom. And Father, I pray that as we open your word, we'd recognize it is the very word of the living God, more important than the word of the news, the word of politicians, the words of our family and our friends. It is your word. So we ask that you would speak to us about having a growing faith. We would hear the voice of God through the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to ask you if you would stand to your feet, if you would stand to your feet, if you are able. Title of the message is, Is Your Faith Growing? I'm going to read a few verses here. I'm going to read the odd verses, and then you're going to read. They'll be up on the screens. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning verse 5, reading through verse 11. I'll read the odd verses. You will read the even verses, that is 6, 8, and 10, beginning with verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 5. For this very reason, make every effort or add to your faith, supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge. In godliness with brotherly affection. In brotherly affection with love. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he's blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his for former sins. For in this way, there will richly be provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, and you may be seated. So the, the title of the message and the question that I want to ask you is this. I want to ask you, is your faith growing? 
Like, do you have a growing faith? So there's three things that I want to do this morning from this passage. Three things I want to do. I want us, I want us to see this, that Peter is actually giving us like a way, like a recipe for a growing faith. We're going to unpack here. And then he's going to talk about the reasons, the reasons for a growing faith. And finally, he's going to talk about here are the awesome results if you have a growing faith. We're going to talk about the recipe laid out here, the way to have a growing faith, the reasons, and finally, the result. And so the first point is going to take a, a while to unpack. The other ones are kind of short. So reviewing here, we saw that what the Christian life is all about, how faith grows, and we saw in verse 1 that we have a like precious faith. And then we saw that we have a faith that is centered, it's based on the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And then continuing, we saw that it relies on his divine power. And we're going to talk about that this morning. Then we saw that we rest in the promises of God. And finally, we saw the promises that were exceedingly great and precious promises. And lastly, we looked at that we can be partakers of the divine nature. So there's Peter, he's writing from prison in Rome under the jurisdiction of Nero there, talking about the very last things he would ever write to the church. Uh, he knew he was going to die, so this was it. And he pens these final words, talking about what it means to have a real, authentic, genuine faith, and then what we're to do to add to that. He talks about having diligence, talking about our effort. And so he talked about, just want to review for a little bit here, Verse 3, his divine power, which has been given to us. And so he says, like, look, like this battery that I've got here that I took out of uh, a little gadget that I had that is, that is dead. It's like saying, like, look, you've got these little batteries, you know, that you come into the, into the world with, but these things run out. Like our own personal energy is limited. It, it runs out there. And so I'm wondering, have you ever had a season in your life where you just felt powerless? like you just didn't have it. Well, what he told us, what Peter told us is that, look, you've got limitless power. You've got access to God's divine power that is continually available to you. Wherever you go, it's portable. You can download it. And so if you could use the illustration like spiritually, we've got these little batteries here, but they're not enough to live the Christian life. And so Jesus said, I'll give you power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. So I want to illustrate it this way. Because so often, tell me if it's not true, we're living on this. But I want to show you. I want to illustrate it this way. If everybody could look at me. There is, this dude is heavy. There is more power. There's more power. on the stage, and I could there, just imagine 10,000 of these batteries, imagine if there was 10,000 of these batteries, and we're living off this, we struggle off this, and the scripture is saying that, look, God has given you his dunamis, his divine, like dynamite, never-ending, in it, uh, infinite supply of power that we don't deserve it, we can't earn it, but it is there. And I wonder how often we live under our privilege of the power that we have. Now, we get it. We all understand about power and needing to repower because we got some iPhone users in the house, do we? Got some iPhone users. So in the Collins household, Collins household, we've got these chargers like all over the house. You buy them three at a time. So we've got these. And we all can relate to this. We've all got our chargers. We've got them in our cars. We've got them in the kitchen. We've got them in the bedroom, in the office. We've got them in the, our briefcases. I carry them in my briefcase. We've got them in the basement. We've got them in the bathroom. We've got them in the game room. You, you've got these everywhere. And so we're very mindful. We are so mindful to keep our iPhones charged up, right? All of us. Are we not, are we not, are we not committed to keeping our iPhones charged up? I'm just asking you. And so we know all about that, and we live in that world. That, And I think to myself, I am not. There is no way, because somebody might need me, 
out there. I, there's no way that I'm going to let this battery run low here. It's very important. And besides that, some of us think I need to check up on my friends and maybe be nosy and look into their life. But whatever. We just use these surf the internet. Whatever it is, the bottom line is we're very mindful. we got to keep these charged. And we are so committed. Friends, we are so committed to keeping our batteries charged. It's like a full-time job. You're thinking about it all the time. And so here's my question to you. How is it then that we are so committed to keeping the battery charged on our iPhone, but what about our spiritual battery? How committed are we to keeping our spiritual batteries charged? Anything like our iPhones. You know, sometimes uh, if you're anything like me, you feel drained. You may feel spiritually drained. And there's God's power. It's like, I want to use the analogy that it is like a, a battery there. And, uh, but we can forget to stay charged up in a spiritual sense here. And so we need regular stops, friends, at the power source, which is Jesus Christ, if we are to live the Christian life that we've been called to live here. And so where are you running flat with your spiritual battery? I mean, in the Bible, you, you read about guys like David. David would recognize this when he was running flat. He would say things like this. He'd say, like, why are, like, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? He would say, soul, like, praise the Lord, like, begin to recharge yourself, soul. Why are you so flat right now? And he would talk to himself about praising the Lord. And you can charge your spiritual battery that we did this morning in worship. Did we not? Didn't you feel a little extra charge coming in while we were singing there? Uh, you can be charged in your prayer life. You can be charged uh, uh, reading the scripture there, investing time alone with God, personal prayer, retreat with God, silence, all that withdrawing. Jesus often withdrew to a private place and prayed there. And so we need to recognize this because Peter said, and Paul uh, affirmed this, that all things have been given to us pertaining to life and godliness. The power, friends, again, to live the Christian life. Imagine 10,000 of those on stage. We've been given the power to live this life. So today we're looking at how to have a faith then that is growing, that demands of us diligence and demands of us effort. Paul put his spin on it in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, when he said, Now work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Notice he didn't say this. He didn't say uh, uh, work for your salvation, but work out your salvation. What God has worked in, you are to work out. And so you're working out what God has worked in because you can't work out anything else. So work out what you've received, but there is effort, there is energy that is required to do this. And so uh, Paul said it in a, in, a, in a different spin in the Message Bible. I wanted to read it to you in Philippians 2.12. He said this, now that I'm separated from you, now that I'm no longer there to be around and to check on you, this is what he said. He said, keep it up. Better yet, he said, redouble your efforts. Be energetic in your salvation, reverent, sensitive to God. That energy is God's energy, the energy deep within you, for it is God. It is God himself who is working in you. And so, and I get it, people sometimes push back but what, what, on this because we don't maybe get a little confused. But what it's saying, what Paul is saying, what Peter is saying is this. Once you've been saved... Live out that life here. The incredible opportunity that we have to work it out. And so what is the idea then of a growing faith? Well, I'm going to talk about that next here, unpacking verse 5 and beyond, where he says, for this very reason, like for what reason? Because you have a like precious faith, because you have a faith in the person of Jesus, because you're partakers of the divine nature, because of the promises of God, because God gives you his power, because of all that, now what? He says, then what? Like hit the chill button, hit the pause button. No, make every effort, give all diligence, and says, and add to your faith. He's saying this, look, there is more to it than what you're probably living. There's more to it than that. So how much effort do we make? 
make every effort, not just, you know, a little effort with your pinky, not just uh, just a tiny bit, make every effort. The idea is maximum effort that you're making here. Saying like, look, all of us, like we partner with God's power, but we got to have a little skin in the game is what he's saying. Faith alone saves, of course, but faith that saves is not alone. It's not alone. You're adding to this. You're adding to your faith is what he's saying. Add some elbow grease to this and make some investment in this journey with God, living out the Christian life. He's saying this, that give some effort, give some energy. Don't have an attitude like, well, it's you know, God, he's all powerful. And all, and he's going to take away my issues. He's going to work out my, no, make every prop, make every effort. You have to be willing is what he's saying. You have to participate. And so uh, it's awesome that we're here. It's awesome that we're here, but just being here is not enough. It's not enough. And so sitting in a chair, uh, we hear the scripture, we get encouraged and all that, but that is not enough. We've got to get involved. We've got to play our part here in our relationship with God. For example, for example, you have the, the, the issue with the woman uh, with blood. Imagine for 12 years she's hemorrhaging. She's completely spent there, and there she is needing to be healed. 12 years is incurable disease, uh, really considered unclean, not allowed in the temple, not allowed to go to church because of her condition, and there she is making every effort, crawling on her hands, on her knees. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, and there's a great picture of someone who's making every effort effort. There you have the paralytic at Capernaum, and his buddies want to help the guy get healed. And so they look, and they know there's Jesus in that house, but there's so many people there, and all the religious crowd, and all that. How can we get this guy into by Jesus? And they're thinking to themselves, what are we going to do? It's like crowded, and so they climb the roof, making every effort, cut a hole in the roof, making every effort, and they drop the guy down to Jesus, where he can have access to Jesus. See, this is what it's talking about, making every effort. I think of David and Goliath. And there's David, and some people might take the attitude like, David would say, okay, God, like there's the war machine of the Philistines. Hey, just do your thing. God, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to pray, and you do your thing. Is that what happened? No. Did David have to go and, and make every effort, make every effort to grab five smooth stones. Did David have to make every effort? You read the scripture. He ran to the battle line. Not away from him. He ran to the battle line. And so he made every effort, and he said, this uncircumcised Philistine will be like the every effort that he make with the lion and the bear. Saul said to him, how are you going to do this? And he said, Saul, let me tell you how I'm going to do this. He said, one day I saw a lion Another day I saw a bear, and I went after him, and I killed him. Make every effort. He said, and this uncircumcised Philistine going to be just like one of them. So Peter is saying, look, we got to make every effort here in your faith. You have to cooperate. It is a costly commitment here, a maximum effort. Doing, God has done everything he could possibly do, and you meet him doing everything that you can possibly do. So the question is this is, what do you need to add to your faith? This is the recipe here for a growing faith. What do you need to add? All of us here need to add something of the great seven there. For all of us, there's probably something that is missing. First he says, and I'm going to go through these quickly, add number one ingredient is virtue. Some of your Bibles will read moral courage. It speaks of a commitment to live for God uh, and sometimes I really believe we have to go in the opposite direction of culture to do this very thing. Um, I, you know, I, so I thought of it this morning as I was reviewing this. I thought of it this morning that when I went to college, I mean, it, it, was, it was dark, but it's nothing like as dark as it is now. And I recognize this going to college as an 18-year-old. Uh, I've been a Christ follower for one year. But I recognize this, that if I'm going to survive this journey in college, I may have to stand alone. I didn't really talk to other people about that. It was just a reality that I came to the conclusion. I might have to stand alone. And I'm saying to us, maybe going to off to college, 
you might have to, in your journey, stand alone. Not, not everybody's going to go, go with you if you want to do number one. That is, you have moral courage here. Sometimes people will oppose you. They'll stand against you. It's an increasingly dark world. I think of Daniel there in the Old Testament where, where the kingdom was against him. And they said, uh, here's the food that you've got to eat. And it says of them that they purposed in their hearts not to be defiled. How many people need to add to their faith this idea of purposing in your heart, I am not going to be defiled. I'm not going to be defiled by the philosophies of the world. I'm not going to be defiled by the patterns and the example. Out there. I'm not going to be defiled by that. And so that's adding to your faith virtue. I wonder how many people here need to add that, watching online, add that to our faith. This is if you're going to have a growing faith, friends. Secondly, it says knowledge. It means gnosis, which means the, the, the knowledge of God there. It means, speaks of feeding on what God has said, feeding on God's Word, observing that, uh, having an experiential, you know, not just knowing about God, but actually knowing Him. Uh, there's the old school song there I'm reminded of, of the B-I-B-L-E, like that's the book for me. Well, that's how we get to know God. Remember, anybody remember that song there? And so in our relationships, are we going to let that rule our relationships? Because if we, we need to grow, add to our faith knowledge. Maybe there's some knowledge, but you need to add more than that. Maybe it's getting a little bit here, a little bit there, and you need to add more to your life. So thirdly, he says this, add, if you want to have a growing faith, self-control. Now that's not talking about just like we're Mr. or Mrs. all-out discipline, but it speaks of depending on God's Spirit to control your mind, to control your activities, your emotions, and all. It's leaning on Him where it speaks there in Ephesians 5.18 to be being continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Be being filled with the Holy Spirit that we would then have self-control there. Another aspect it talks about here, if we're going to have a growing faith, your, some of your translations read temperance or patience, but it literally means a steadfast endurance. Endurance for like what? Endurance under pressure. Endurance under problems. If you're going to be growing in your faith, this is to be built into our lives. A steadfastness, a, a continuance there of endurance. How many people need to add that to your faith? He continues and he says, and some of us, number five, need to add to our faith, godliness. And that speaks of a a devotion to God or a God-centeredness where God is central to our lives and not just kind of, I do my thing, I do my life, and yeah, God's a part of my life, but God's like out there, peripheral, but he's not central. This talks about God being central to your life, where you have a God consciousness in your life, a, a, a focusing on God. I think of uh, in, in the Old Testament, Joseph. He was really a godly guy when you think about it, a godly guy. And so from pit to pinnacle to prison to the highest level of power, the guy was like a godly guy. And you see there when he had the opportunity to uh, uh, be with Potiphar's wife and she puts the moves on him, makes sexual advances toward him, what does he say to her? I mean, think about the godly comment that came out of his mouth. He said this, he said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against her, sin against me, sin against my, sin against God? You see the centrality of God in his life. And then you look at the very end of his life. I mean, he's putting on a clinic for godliness when his brothers there show up and now he's like the man, he's large and in charge, dispensing food and there his brothers come that tried to put him away did him wrong, did him bad, no resentment, no anger, no bitterness. And he says to them, he says, hey, what you guys did to me, you didn't have my back, what you did to me, you intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. There he is, at the end of his life, his story there, 
there, not the end of his life, but the end of this story is there. There he is. He, God is central to his life. Add to your faith godliness. How many people need to do that? Then he says number six, and then brotherly affection. So we need to add moral integrity. We need to add knowledge, patience, uh, perseverance, godliness, godliness, then brotherly affection. That is phileo. That is that friendship. Some people here, truth is, some people, it's not very friendly. You're just not. And maybe you're the one that needs to add to your life phileo, like friendliness. And then he goes on to say, then he uh, goes on to say, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 10, be kindly, watch, be kindly affectionate toward one another, okay, in brotherly love. That's brotherly phileo. And then he talks about the next thing, agapeo, or God's love, and with finally agape love, which is to love not just your friends and your buddies and hanging out and going to church, church, not just that, but loving the unlovely. Loving the unlovely. How I've been confronted with this in my lifetime about loving people that it's easy to love. What about having the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us? Titus 3. And so there it is, friends. I'm done with point number one, which is the recipe. I said it would take a long time. Don't worry. We'll be done by no later than 12. It's going to run the whole thing together. Come on, somebody. No, They're, the next two points are kind of like bank shots, okay? The three-point bomb is done. These are like bank shots. But So that was the recipe for a growing faith. Now we're going to continue here. Uh, we're going to talk about not only what you need to add to your faith here, but we're going to talk about verse 8, which is this. Verse 8, we're going to talk the reasons for a growing faith. Watch. For if these qualities, what qualities? Which qualities we just talked about are yours. Not only that, and they're increasing. What do they keep you from? Watch. They keep you from being ineffective, unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Add to your faith those things. The result of that is this, that you, you will be fruitful. You'll be fruitful in your life. And then it says in verse 9, it says you, you'll have a growing faith. You will flourish in your faith. You'll have a fruitful faith. Who wants that? And then number 9, and whoever lacks these is also nearsighted, so nearsighted that you're blind, and you've forgotten the sins from which you were cleansed. So he's saying this, look, if you, if you don't make the decision to live and have a growing faith, you may just uh, enter into a season of being spiritually blind where you're wrapped up in everything temporal and the mundane and the material because you're not growing in your faith and you're just kind of nearsighted as a, as a Christ follower, not really having an eternal perspective, not seeing through the lens which God would have you see through. And so uh, you can have a faith which is growing, which is dynamic, which is fruitful, uh, and where you see things as God sees them. And not just having forgotten where you came from. I don't know about you, but uh, I recognize that on my best day, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, on my best day, I'm a sinner saved by grace. On my very best day. Yeah, I'm a saint, but I'm also a sinner saved by grace. And not only that, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve, I'm telling you, I don't deserve to be with you. Natural life playing out. Rod Collins would not be in church, would not be here. I, I, like, I'm very mindful from where I have come. So he says here, don't forget. He says, don't forget from where you have come. He says, having forgotten that you were cleansed from your former sins. Do you, do you, are, are you mindful of that? And then he says in verse 10, having talked about the recipe for a growing faith, having talked about the reasons for a growing faith, and now we close with this. A couple awesome results. Check this out. Therefore, verse 10, here's the wrap-up. He's wrapping it up. He says, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. 
Or if you practice these qualities, you'll never fail. So to be diligent speaks of like, hey, like there should be a little urgency about this. Like, don't, don't be casual about this. You're a child of God. You are saved from your sin. You have a growing faith. And, and what does that mean? Here's what it means, everybody. Please don't miss this. It means this. You're, you have a life calling. Well, what does that mean? That means everybody in the room, everybody in their cars, everybody online, you are everybody that names the name of Christ. You are a minister with a ministry. Well, well, I, like I, I'm not like a, a formal. You are bivocational, is what it's saying here. It says, look, confirm your calling and your election. You're like bivocational. You're a minister of Jesus Christ. Yeah, we got our day jobs and all that, but you have a calling from God. So important that we get this. Doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter what your day job is. Doesn't matter that you're a you're a health professional or you're an attorney or you're a contractor or school teacher or a voice teacher or, or a truck driver or a hospice worker or a chaplain or a custodian or a homemaker or an accountant or a McDonald's worker. Doesn't matter. You are a minister with a ministry. Make your calling and your election sure. So you've been summoned by, by Christ. You've been called by grace. Friends, been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We've been called according to God's purpose. We've been called to salvation. We've been called with a holy calling. We've been called uh, by the power, by the power of God so that, friends, we can, we can do it. Just imagine the 10,000 batteries. We can, we can do this by God's power. It's not our power. And so the result of a growing faith, finally, and I close with this. It says this. It's awesome. Then God will give you what kind of an entrance? All of us have a, 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 the, the possibility for this. A grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter was about to step into that, so he was very mindful of that, that he was going to die shortly. A triumphant entry into heaven is the end of it all, the option that we have. And so you're going to heaven victoriously, triumphantly, awesomely because of this. So great. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And thank you for your word, which um, is just awesome. If you could close your eyes and uh, just kind of in your cars, uh, there at home watching online, and here in the tent, just enter into a little uh, sacred moment, a little sacred space, uh, just you and God in that space. And I wonder who here would feel like, God, I... I need more power in my life. I'm the one that's got the little dinky battery that Rod was holding. Father, I, if you need to pray this prayer, pray this prayer. I need you to forgive me, and I choose to give you my life. And I choose to put my trust in the risen Christ who died on the cross. And repeat after me, those who need to repeat this prayer. You want to take Christ as your Savior. And Lord Jesus, come into my life and take over and cause me to live for you. Thank you for saving me, for loving me, for accepting me. Bring your resurrection life into me. Today, I call upon you and want to follow Jesus Christ. In your name I pray. Amen. And friends, uh, we're going to take communion. Jesus, before he went to be with the Father, and when he was with his followers, he took some bread and he said, this is my body which is going to be broken for you. As often as you take this bread and you eat it, you remember what I did. And they were entering into this covenant relationship with one another. 
and they broke the bread, which 2,000 years ago we do today, to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. And then he took a cup, which was represented his blood, and he said, this is my blood, the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. As often as you do drink of this cup, he said, you remember my death and what I've done for you. So if you want to prepare to take that, and then the worship team is going to be singing over us. So let's pray. Father, thank you for the bread which represents your broken body and the juice which represents your blood which was spilled for us. We take it today remembering what you've done for us. May you always remember what you've done for us. So let us take the bread and then let us take the cup and then the worship team is going to sing over us. As the deep panted for the water so my soul longeth after thee Desire and I long to worship Thee as the deep and for the waters of my soul longeth after Thee. You alone are my Desire and I long to worship Thee. You alone, You alone are my strength, my shield. You alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my Desire and I long to worship thee as a day and as a dear for the water so my soul longeth that to thee you alone are my Desire and I long to worship Thee. You alone, You alone are my strength, my shield. To You alone may my spirit give. together.
If you can uh, just put yourself in a position to receive God's blessing. One of the things we would just love to do is to, to gather around the scripture, to gather around worship, but then to receive um, God's blessing. And we want to just send you off having received his blessing. So if you want to prepare yourself for that, you can lift your hands, close your eyes, however you want to prepare yourself to receive God's blessing. I want to pray that over all of us. So, Father, thank you for those that have gathered online, for those that are in drive-in church, have gathered in the tent here. Father, the eyes of and the affections of our faith are, are looking at you. Father, as you see your children, I pray that you would extend your divine blessing to them, every spiritual blessing to them. I pray, O oh God, that you would stir their hearts, that you would draw them uniquely by your Holy Spirit to yourself that they would experience you, that they would have God moments, Holy Spirit moments, hearing the voice of God, bringing to remembrance the scripture to their minds, that just drawing near to you this week, doing what only you can do. Father, I pray you place your hand upon them. I pray you stir their hearts and draw them to yourself. I pray you strengthen them, encourage them, comfort them, heal them. I pray you do this and that you would do more. I pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God love you, Drive-In Church. God love you, Online Church. And God love you in the tent. See you next time.